Welcome to the Metasploit Sprint Demo Meeting for September 19th, 2017. Uh, let's take a look at some community stats. We've got um, a, a different version of what I usually show about what the current PRQ looks like. And I think, um, Brent, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this trailing end is not set yet, like it's still floating. Yeah, it'll float until the end of the month. End of the month, right yeah. on. So these are kind of just kind of wherevers. Um, but you can kind of see a trend over time from for the last uh, two and a half years or so, a little over two and a half years, uh, maybe three, um, of uh, uh, round features and enhancements, um, Rapid7 related ones that were open and closed versus uh, community or total, including Rapid7, I guess, ones that were open and closed um, over time. Geez, we're really busy uh, about April this year. What, yeah. did, we, what did we do? <laughs> <laughs> What the? Eternal blue. Eternal blue. <coughs> Lots of features and enhancements. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's good good to keep busy. There was uh, no shadow brokers dumped roughly. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. times. Cool. And um, we'll look at here's the uh, current uh, uh, leaderboard for top committers this last month. Um, Dave, you're, you're creeping up on them. That's Still good. so yeah. far behind. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a rolling average, right? Yeah. So. yeah there you go. <laughs> and there's, you know, and so big thanks. I see OJ and, and Hoodie and. Jeffrey, tons of Tim, tons of you know people up there. You know, thanks to everybody uh, who's been contributing uh, to Metasploit. Yeah, let's see here. All right, uh, let's just talk about some things that have landed uh, recently. Um, uh, Xanatos team, particularly Dave Maloney and Dev, have been uh, been, been making Ruby SMB file system operations um, mo better and more stuff. And I think we'll have a demo of a couple of those uh, today. Yeah, right on. Um, name type pipe to transport uh, and hand in hand with that uh, channel is packet pivots and the packet pivots are using the named pipe, uh, pipe transports now is that right Brent? The improvements around the pivoting that have gone in now so that you're not you don't incur uh, more latency as you stack oh, yeah. pivots as you will is that is that around are they using the, is it the named pipes that are making that? Yeah work? actually named pipes was the reason why we added that as a, as a side effect although it was kind of a good side effect because it means that now you can well actually you know what um, the only thing that supports being um, pivoted that way is named pipes. So they're kind of uh, uh, joined at the hip at the moment. But uh, we're looking forward to basically adding support for the other stages as well over those pivots. Yeah, cool. Good stuff. Transports, that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Will Vu hooked us up with an Apache Struts uh, 2 REST plugin via Xtreme. Gives you remote con uh, code execution. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, and that's been, you know, Apache Struts uh, <laughs> uh, deserialization bugs have been sort of all the thing these days. Yeah. Turns out that was not the one we think that, or at least not the only one we think that was used against the Equifax breach. But um, but another one, which you also have a MetSwipe module for, we've had since April. Absolutely. So good good modules in the tree there. Yeah. Um, if only Equifax had used MetaSploit, they would have totally known. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they did, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all good. Uh, so, and we also had a, a community contributor, uh, Professor Plum, I, uh, give, give some uh, malware controller exploits. Uh, yeah, it's always nice to be able to take down the malware controllers. Yeah, it's, exactly. That's Colonel Mustard PRs. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Peacock would like to have a word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In the, the data center with, with, the, with the exploit <laughs> With the exploit module, okay. Excellent. Uh, new version of Clue coming your way soon. Uh, we also had a, a Dispulse Enterprise uh, buffer overflow uh, land, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they got like a little web server built in. And people are always bundling their own custom bespoke web servers. I don't know why they still do that these days, but uh, there you go. Yeah, our, their loss are gain, I guess. Or, yeah. Uh, um, Java Android shell expansion? Yeah, so so basically we had a problem where we just called bin sh uh, from, from Java or Android interpreters, uh -huh. which had the effect of one, not actually escaping or expanding any environment variables. Um, in your command line argument, and two, um, none of your environment actually got inherited either. So you would always end up in like slash um, rather than oh, your current right. working directory. Um, now it actually does sort of a bin sh on top of bin sh sort of thing. So it gets a nice shell expansion and gives you a, a nice environment you can actually do things in rather nice. than uh, a pathless, environmentless, um, <laughs> dead shell. So. Fairly minimal, sterile environment. Yeah, you get a little more usable space now. Much easier. Yeah. Very cool. And there was a there's a Docker uh, daemon TCP in the exploits and quotes here. I, I, the reason I put an exploit in there is because this is another one of those sort of um, code execution by design sort Woo! of things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, great <laughs> for Docker. Yeah, I think Dev Mahoney <laughs> landed that one. Yeah, right on. Very cool. Good times. Nice. So let's talk about things in the works. 
But so we had a Metasploitable 3 uh, capture the flag um, at United, uh, right. which uh, James will give us a slowdown a little bit. And then, uh, but we've got one coming up at DerbyCon this week. You're being, being prepared to run one out of the uh, Rapid7 booth. So if you happen to be around um, the Rapid7 booth at DerbyCon, we'll be trying to do a reprise of the Metasploitable 3 capture the flag. We hopefully we've got rid of a lot of the initial major kinks and uh, it'll go really smoothly up there. I don't know. That's our, that's a convention full of hackers too. We might <laughs> find out a whole lot more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're actually managing it while we're down there. Uh, Brendan and me will, will basically be the, the go-to guys and we'll know how to pull the flag in case things go south. <laughs> so James, stay by your phone. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Uh, Multi-panel console is uh, in the works. Bill, yeah, Bill been, been Bill's been on, on that, that yeah. one. Yeah, so the idea there is, uh, well, last year we had uh, this this notion that um, actually Jenna Magius uh, put a PR up where um, uh, we do some terminal tricks so that when you have like a background thread running, it won't overwrite all the stuff that you're doing in the foreground. However, that's one of those uh, you know the best intentions sort of PRs uh, or what do they call? Um, no good deed goes unpunished right. kind of things. Oh, yeah. And uh, so basically that caused a lot of bad side effects as well. So we've got it disabled right now, but um, there's, a, there's a new approach that we're looking at and, and Bill's been, been working on proof of concept for um, making so that background messages can actually be redirected to a different window or even a different pane within the same window um, using Tmux. And that way you can keep typing and your messages can keep scrolling and the two don't interfere with each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully we'll have a, a proof of concept from that uh, working pretty soon. Yeah, that was very nice. And DNS transports. So this is funny. So on Twitter, this basically said, hey, uh, you know, I can't seem to get uh, DNS tunnels to work with an interpreter and all the DNS tunnels that are out there are all crashy and broken. So here's a neat stager. And I happened to notice it. And I said, well, I'll just make a missile issue around that. And then this was like, oh, my God, that's great. Thanks for putting this on your radar. And then um, someone else piped in, uh, I believe um, Simper Victus piped in and said, hey, um, you know, maybe we could uh, build something like this. And then the original author piped in of the, uh, the stager said, oh, don't use this. Actually, I have a whole branch where I've added DNS transports to interpreter already. And uh, can you guys help me like clean it up? So actually that's working right now. It's kind of funny. I just kind of said, it would be nice to have DNS transports. And someone just said, hey, I've got it. Was, it, uh, was it CJR? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he, wor he worked on that years ago. I I'm never sure if he actually had it working or not. For the record, let me look it up here to make sure I got the right attribution. <laughs> but, uh, but you, you can go, go on ahead. Yeah, right uh, on. Domain fronting is also a pretty sexy thing um, that's that's in the works. Uh, the idea here being that um, if you can basically uh, control an asset that's within, like, say, a whitelisted domain or within a whitelisted uh, set of IPs, say, on AWS or within some sort of hosted web application service, and then you can make your traffic look like it's legitimate for those kind of things by changing the host headers and, and application headers, cookies, that sort of thing. Then you can just basically get inherent whitelisted through firewalls and application level um, you know, inspectors and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, uh, I believe, implemented right now for Python and Windows Interpreter. We still need to add Unix Interpreter support, but um, it's coming along pretty nicely. Nicely. Does it mean that when you uh, sit in the middle and then you see HTTP requests, you just change the host? Uh, header and there are about four or five headers that we're going to give the user control over, uh -huh. um, including adding extra headers um, and injecting cookies as mm -hmm. well, so that you can make your traffic look more like a real web app. Okay. You, you'll get a good kick out of that, and <laughs> hopefully you'll find some bugs as well. All right. <laughs> cool. All righty. On that note, we'll get up to the team updates here. It's the A team. Oh, we talked about the name pipes and the, the pivot improvements. Um, so I'm working on that. Um, new modules like the Struts, uh, Apache Struts uh, Xtreme uh, module we mentioned earlier, and, and as well as others. Uh, the multi pane panel console uh, work that's going on. Um, I'm working on upgrading, uh, updating aggregator to handle the Crypt TLV. Yeah. And uh, then we mentioned the Metasploital 3 Capture the Flag, the DerbyCon edition uh, coming up. This, yeah. this week. And just, just to kind of correct our original uh, notes, um, Alexi Sinstoff is uh, the one working on the DNS pivoting. Oh, uh, awesome. The DNS transport stuff. Cool. Thank you. Neat. And the Xanatos team, um, SMB2 file system operations march, marching forward. Uh, write and delete are, are in, and we'll see a demo of those. Uh, more database related work. Um, I don't know if we've been actively, this this last cycle, if we've done any the Mesploit 5. POC interface work, but no, okay, probably more to come. Uh, metal extension loader, um, if we don't run out of time today, I've got a demo of that, and um, that should be hopefully landing before the next uh, meeting. It needs a review 
um, and in some wrap up, but that's basically Xanatos. Time for demos. <laughs> All right. Take one is also clapping for him. All right. You got a demo for demos. Well, oh, game. Demos. This is actually North Carolina. So, yeah. It's demos. Demos. It was what I found. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Stop uh, analyzing the memes. That's right. <laughs> Hey, and according to my calendar, tomorrow is Script Junkie's birthday. So yeah. if uh, if you're watching the replay of this, Script yeah. Junkie, happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> right on. Woo! All right. So Ruby SMB, I'm going the wrong direction on my screens. Uh, Ruby SMB, this uh, this past sprint, uh, I think this was the first time you started work. This sprint was your first. Uh, Dev <coughs> joined me on working on Ruby SMB at the beginning of the sprint. Uh, in combination with getting uh, Christoph De La Fuente, uh, our community contributor involved, we've actually made really rapid progress um, in this sprint. And so I'm going to show you some of the, excuse me, frog in my throat, uh, some of the SMB2 file operations. Uh, everything I'm going to show you today, sometime in the next day or two, Christoph will be actually putting up a pull request to do all the same stuff in the older SMB1. Uh, he wrote all the packets for that for us, so he's doing the client side of it. So expect to see SMB1 parity in like another day or two. But uh, for SMB2, uh, first things first, we're going to look at, we've got this uh, nice little test.txt file here in our test chair, right? So first thing I'm going to do is actually go ahead and delete that file. So once again, using our handy dandy example scripts, uh, every major operation that like we get working, we add an example script to the gem uh, so that people can test each individual operation and see it work. And also if like people want to learn about the protocol, they can run the example with Wireshark and kind of learn uh, exactly how SMB does these various things. Uh, so First thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of that file. And we can see our final status, our final status here at the end says it was successful. And we look, test.txt <laughs> is now gone from our server. Hooray! Yeah. We can delete things. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to recreate that file. Uh, we're going to use our write file uh, example, which is just, again, saying, you know, connect to the server. Here are the credits. Here's the share. Here's the file. Uh, and if it doesn't exist, we're going to create it. So we run that. It says it was successful. Test.txt is there. We open it. Hello again to all my friends. Um, yeah, ah, but, but so what there's happened? More. Yeah, oh, there's more. There's, there's, there's more. still quite a bit more. Um, so what were what would happen in this particular example if we were to call write again on the file, but it already exists. Huh. It depends on how you opened it, right? Right, uh, it does. <laughs> and for the purposes of this example, we write, we write goodbye in, and because of the options, well, well oh, I, just I overwrote a space, but uh, it, start, it started from the beginning of the file again and overwrote only as far as you told it to write. So. You can start. You can imagine how you can actually start to do very precise writes uh, in a more. Now, in the example script here, um, let me pull this up just so you can see it. We are only passing in the data for the example script, but you can actually pass in an offset to this method and precisely control where in the file you're overwriting. You can do if you wanted single byte. Uh, twiddling in uh, anywhere in a file. Can you do regular expressions though? <laughs> no, that's not a thing you use regular expressions for. <laughs> well, appending this way, right? Yes. So appending is a whole. Uh, we we do appending also, and we have a specific example for that. Um, where if I bring up the example here, we actually have a separate method called append that automatically just basically calls the write method, but sets the offset to be the very end of the file. And I'm going to show that next. So thanks for jumping the gun. Data. <laughs> 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 oh, bullet. 
quotes. I did something wrong with my quotes. Where'd I go? Nothing really. You just have a space. It may not like that exclamation mark. I don't know. Maybe there's a exclamation mark. What? Oh, you can escape the it. Market. There we go. I, I don't know. I must, I must have put a control character in there that I didn't mean to at some point. Uh, okay. So it says that it completed successfully. So if we reopen this file, we can see that we have appended successfully to the end of the file. And like I said, you could also do precise, uh, precise writing if you wanted to. We don't have that specifically set up in the example script. But when I'm done with this file, I can just run back in here and delete the whole file. So read, uh, and we show, of course, showed read uh, on the previous sprint demo. So read, write, append, delete, delete. and uh, also even the ability to then close the handle to the file are now all complete. And dev has actually already begun work on uh, renaming files. So taking an existing file and changing the, the file name to something else. Uh, and like I said, Christoph De La Fuente, I talked to him last Friday. He was just about, he's in France, so he's on a time zone difference here, but um, he was just about ready to submit a PR for all these same operations using the exact same API that we developed uh, for SMB1. So we'll have uh, basically seamless integration where the, say somebody writing a Metasploit module using this library will not at any point care whether they've negotiated SMB1 or SMB2. They will use all the same methods and they will all behave the same way. So is the next plan to convert the existing mixins to use this or are we going to write a new mixin and then convert modules to use that? So I'm glad you asked. Uh, so the original plan we had had for most of the stuff we need to convert still in, S uh, in terms of SMB and Metasploit framework is all DC RPC related in some way. We thought that once we had named pipes pretty much settled, we could just insert, hand our existing DC RPC code a named pipe abstraction and tell it to write over that. Mm -hmm. It turns out our DC RPC code is written in such a way that the DC RPC code reaches deep into the existing SMB code to do a bunch of stuff. So they're basically so tightly coupled, we can't use it. So what we actually are need to do next is get some limited DC RPC support directly into Ruby SMB, uh, starting with the ability to enumerate shares. That's the first one we're going to do. Uh, also makes sense for the client. Um, and then we'll just basically, if, if we need to, we'll make a mix, a new mix in and framework. But even that, I'm not sure there's a lot of value unless we find ourselves doing like really complicated stuff over and over again on top of the client. So modules should have basically expect to just use the client directly. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice change. Yeah. Like so uh, sort of the same policy we tried to do with, uh, with login scanners, but I think uh, a little less complex, so it'll work easier. Nice. Just. You'll, you'll basically, you'll you call your connect method in, uh, in a module mm -hmm. to get your TCP socket. You'll use that to instantiate a dispatcher. You'll pass the dispatcher into the create initializer for your SMB client. And then from there, you'll just use the client uh, and the various sub-objects that it spawns. Lovely. So it'll, Lovely. All, it'll all be written more like real Ruby instead of some of the crazy <laughs> style that we've developed over the years. I love it. <coughs> So, I like that fake Ruby. Yeah. Well, we just we don't follow Ruby, Ruby conventions. Uh, I believe it's called <laughs> faux Ruby. <laughs> Non-object oriented Ruby, basically. <laughs> so very very cool. Thanks, yeah, thanks Dave. That's good stuff. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dev. And Dev. Thank you, Dev. <clears throat> We're both DM in Slack, and I always mistype the names. <laughs> We're basically the same person. Mm -hmm. Technically, we have less than two minutes left for a demo. All right. Do you want to demo the data? So, I, yeah, so I would actually like a few more than two minutes to demo the, the, the metal extensions, but um, I can just show it run real quick if everybody wants to see it real quick. I'll show it run real quick. Oh, I need to show my share? Yeah. What's a metal extension, Pierce? So a metal extension is a loadable sharing. module that allows you to load code. Not sharing, Pierce. I'm not sharing? No, I'm not sharing. Let me try that again. All right. Thank you. Um, so it allows you to, to dynamically load code on a, a session where you have metal, the POSIX interpreter running. Um, and that allows us to keep 
the core size of metal you know, to a minimum, and you can just, you know, it makes it easy for people to add functionality um, to, you know, what, what, for whatever they need without actually modifying the uh, metal itself directly. Um, so these are metal, these are compiled uh, objects, uh, C code that we build, you know, build an executable out of based on OS and architecture. Mm -hmm. and so in this case, we created, uh, uh, for a uh, first swag, uh, created a, a sniffer module, similar to what we have for Meterpreter, Windows Meterpreter. And what we'll run here is we'll, we'll uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm running in a VM, uh, uh, Ubuntu VM here, and I'm running locally just to, to showcase this stuff. I started up the console here, hopefully everybody can see that okay. And so it's going, should should make a connection to the, uh, to metal there, yeah. So let's connect I1, and so we'll say, all right, show me what you got. All right, this is a list of the commands that current supports. Hey, you know what? I really want to do some network sniffing. Let's load the sniffer. Tab complete. It works. <clears throat> sniffer loaded. You'll see here that I've got a little bit of debug turned on. It says, oh, hey, I started up a process. So this is our, our extension running. And now if we do help, we'll see, oh, look, now there's these sniffer commands that weren't there before. Yay. Um, I'm going to skip part of the demo and show you. We just, we'll do one capture real quick. Sniff. Sniffer start. Um, on, so sniffer interfaces to list the interfaces. Tab complete. Sniffer uh, start uh, on interface two. We'll say 20,000 packets. That's all more than we need. But the nice thing about this is, is it supports Berkeley packet filter syntax. Yay. So let's just say I want um, I want to see what somebody's doing for on their DNS queries and like port 80 HTTP stuff. So I could run this, and then you could say sniffer stats. Mm -hmm. On, on the interface, there's really nothing going on over here. Oh, let me go curl uh, Dave Maloney's favorite site, purple.com. Hey, look at that, I'm, I'm pulling some <laughs> stuff. All right, now let's see what stats here. Oh, look, it got some packets and some bytes. Let's stop the capture. So we don't know, actually, I'll just dump it. You can actually leave the capture running. It'll just take a copy of the, the packets that have already been captured and allow the capture to keep running in the background. And so we'll dump this to my capture and it should. Now, of course, the demo gods are against me. Ah, I tempted fate by making a, a last minute change. In any case, <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Um, well, so this is where the chef pulls the PCAP out of the That's where I pulled the PCAP out of the oven, but I, unfortunately, I think I deleted all the PCAPs I had earlier. So That's yeah. a really cool mechanism, Pierce. How does it work? Um, I know like normal interpreters, like Windows interpreter, load it straight into memory. Is this a little different? So yes, it is actually Brent. Uh, so this is this what what this one what this one does is it um, it actually uh, you, right now it, I'm working on the process hollowing bit, bit of it. So it'll start up a process without writing it to, to disk, and it will use standard uh, standard I/O, standard in, standard out, standard error for communicating with the the, the, the extension process. Um, and over that, it will use TLB. So that's an established uh, format that we, that we use uh, for uh, communications between interpreters and framework already. Um, and it'll, it'll allow that allows uh, incoming requests for um, commands that the extension handles that aren't normally handled by uh, metal. Metal will identify. I don't know this one, but this this extension does and sends it along. Oh, cool. Kind of acts as a proxy. So um, do you store all the packets in the remote, or you send them to the to the, your console as they are being captured? So I store all the packets. Uh, the packets are, are they're not streamed. They're they're stored on the target. And, and this, this this command here where I told it. How many packets to capture? It will it will capture that many packets, and it's a ring buffer. It'll just keep going. Just, just so you'll, you'll get the last 20,000 packets mm -hmm. at, at any given time that where you where you do a dump or you do a stop and a dump or a, a stop and a what's a release is what we call for getting rid of the just just drop the buffer. I don't care. Okay. So when you do the when you do the dump, what it should do is it should stop it and then pull the. Uh, oh, in this case, it doesn't stop it. It just pulls the, the current ones over. I, I see USB the in there too. Was that was that intentional? Does that really work? Can it capture uh, USB packets? I have I, well, it says unusable. Unusable usable is false, so I don't know okay. if it can actually. Yeah, uh, good question. Probably a privilege issue then. It probably, yeah. Maybe. Well, but are you are you using libpcap under the covers, right? We're using libpcap. So that, that means you correct. can sniff Bluetooth too with the proper <laughs> libraries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, maybe. Oh, yeah. it's gonna be so yeah. awesome. You, you have, have to pull can... additional libraries and yeah. right. things to work. Yeah, that's what I said. So some of these things. Well, that's because of the way it's structured. When anybody writes an extension. Uh, they can decide what what libraries they need, and it's built build it statically in, um, such that 
they'll, their their extension will have the things it needs to, to execute. So, so you have to, you have to drag along all the libraries, like in the old Python interpreter, every library was sort of glommed into the the main. That's right. That's right. You can just target it for your extension and, and have it carry along there. So that's sweet. So this, hopefully this will be done and landed by the next cycle. And we'll, uh, there, there's a documentation file called extensions that that'll, that's there in, in my branch and it'll be there for people to read about how to how, all these details we discussed and how to create them and things. Woo! So awesome. and next time I'll start. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody.